What's up, everybody? I'm Alex. I'm Cody. From Slow Your Roll, and we're going to be talking about the five best feats that you need at your table. And we're actually going to be taking them right from D&D Beyond, so you can download them and add them into your game immediately. And no need to delay, we'll just get right to it. Um, these were picked from basically the top rated or the top added um, for other people, and then we also kind of sorted through a couple of them to fix them up a little bit. So mm -hmm. first one we got is the Ventriloquist feat. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read it out as it is, then we'll talk about it a little bit. So here we go. You've honed. Wow, I forgot how to say that word for a second. Okay. <clears throat> You've honed a talent uh, for throwing your voice into creatures and objects. You gain the following benefits. Bullet one, increase your charisma score by one to a maximum of 20. Bullet two, you can speak without moving your lips. Bullet three, you can throw your voice when you speak, making it appear to originate from any source that you can see within 20 feet of you. A suspicious creature can use its action to attempt an insight check uh, contested by your deception check. If the creature's check equals or exceeds your own, it determines that you are the true source of the speech. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this is pretty sweet for sure. I know that there's been plenty of characters uh, or players at our table that could totally make really cool use of this. Um, and it'd be a really fun, like... Um, role play thing to happen too outside of combat even absolutely and plus even if it's not for somebody who's like a bard or something just for spellcasters would be awesome to make it look like you're not the one saying what you have to say to cast a spell it's kind of like subtle spell it, you know in a way yeah for sure you could totally uh side skirt some of the issues that you might have with semantic uh components using this Absolutely. But moving on right into the next of our feats, we're going to be looking at blind fighting. A pre Ugh. I really tried not to mess up that word. Like I looked at it and I was like, you're going to mess that up. And then I just <laughs> messed it up. Immediately. A prerequisite for blind fighting is you must have proficiency in the perception skill. Extensive and continuous training in complete darkness, or in some cases, with the aid of blindfolds, have allowed you to hone your remaining senses to a razor's edge. This specialized combat training has granted you the ability to perceive your surroundings in ways others couldn't begin to imagine. You develop blind sight up to a range of 20 feet. Your blind sight can only work in a setting where your character can use his other senses, like hearing and smell. You gain advantage on perception checks relying on hearing and smell. That one is pretty sweet. There was one time where a player that doesn't play often uh, made a character and played at our table and they really wanted to play a blind character, really similar to like Daredevil. Okay. And this feat would be literally perfect for something like that. And it'd be a way to still be able to see, maybe even have advantages over some of the other party members in your sight. Um, but pretty cool roleplay twist. Oh, absolutely. And this would probably be a great feat to just give to somebody if they did have a uh, blind character. Like they just wanted mm -hmm. to start with that downside. You could just give them this feat and be like, okay, build your character. Number three in the top feats that we've found uh, is candle burning at both ends. This one's really interesting. Adventurers often disregard grievous, gr grievous, that's not a word. General grievous. Adventurers often disregard a grievous injury to continue fighting at the expense of their future well-being. You gain the following benefits. You increase your constitution score by 1 to a maximum of 20. If you would fall to 0 hit points or die, instead you may permanently mark a death saving throw as failed and your hit points become equal to one third your total health rounded up. If all death saving throws are marked as failed, then your character dies and cannot be resurrected outside of divine intervention. If a death save is marked as failed by this ability, then you require that many less successful death saving throws in order to stabilize. I there's actually a little quote at the end of it too. It's like, quote, I can't die. I'm too busy for that. From Rollins, Captain of the Watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I didn't even see that. Well, shoot. That would really make some interesting uh, character moments for sure. Absolutely. And realistically, the feat is probably a little too strong. Imagine if you wanted to play a really hardcore game and all of your player characters are going to end up dying at least once or a couple times. This would be a really fun way to do that. Maybe run like a Souls-like themed game or something like that. That would be pretty cool. 
plus this candle burning at both ends feet kind of has a a really good theme around like maybe even an Oathbreaker Paladin. Like Rollins, Captain of the Watch was an Oathbreaker and like the only way he can get revived like from actual death is divine intervention. So I think that's pretty cool thematically. Yeah, for sure. I don't know if Rollins, Captain of the Watch is a real thing or not, but if it is, leave it in the comments because I'm not familiar with it. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't look it up. I'm too busy for that. So, okay. <laughs> Just like Rollins, Captain of the Watch, we're looking at the Battle Wise. Feet, that is. A prerequisite for taking the Battle Wives. <clears throat> Oof. <laughs> for taking a Battle Wife. <laughs> yes. A prerequisite for taking the Battle Wise feat is a wisdom score of 13 or higher. Your experience on the battlefield has hardened you and gifted you with tactical instinct. Increase your constitution or wisdom score by 1 to a maximum of 20. You gain a bonus to initiative equal to your wisdom modifier, and you can use the help action as a bonus action. This is pretty cool. And, you know, I feel like I've kind of always wanted some sort of feature like this in D&D. Don't you think, Cody? Absolutely. In fact, anyone that might be following from our previous videos covering another game system called DC20, there's a class in that game called the Warlord. And honestly, this feat is like someone that's played that class and they're like, man, how do I make a character more like them? Uh, it's really cool. But anyway, yeah, regardless, <laughs> this feat is pretty awesome. Um, no, I agree. And honestly, man, this is one of the first times in D and D, I've ever heard somebody refer to the help action as far as like buffing it or even trying to debuff it for uh, abilities or feats. So it's cool to at least see it referenced here. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be a very cool use of a bonus action to be able to use the help action. I mean, that's that's pretty awesome. I I would try to take this feat. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, by the way, the shameless plug for DC twenty. The link for the alphas in the description below. <laughs> and if you think you can out optimize my beast born, then uh. You're wrong. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> oh my gosh, the new update is so cool. Okay, anyway, the last and maybe most interesting uh, feat in this whole list is called End Him Rightly, which is very dramatic for what the feat actually is, but you right. tell me if it's appropriate. Um, there is a prerequisite for this one as well. It does require proficiency in at least one kind of sword, and you'll see why. Um, description is as follows. You have mastered a little-known sword technique. Uh, as an action, you can unscrew the pommel from your sword and throw it at a creature within 20 feet of you. <laughs> when you do so, you make a ranged weapon attack against it using your strength modifier. Uh, you are proficient in this attack. Yeah. On a hit, the target takes bludgeoning damage equal to 1d4 plus your strength modifier and must make an intelligence saving throw... <laughs> with a DC 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus strength modifier, or be stunned by the impracticality of your tactics until the end of your next turn. <laughs> the pommel lands within five feet of your target, and you have disadvantage on all attack rolls made with the sword, whose pommel you unscrewed, due to it being imbalanced, until you pick it up and use an action to screw it back on. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Dude, that's like perfect for an artisifer. Oh, yeah. It's like a great tinkering technique or like, oh, man, the bounty hunter or like the shady fighter. The one that's like kind of always <laughs> drunk, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, 100%. Or like this, the scoundrel like character. Like this is a Han Solo move, you know, like it's just goofy. A thousand percent, <laughs> dude. And. I love the fact that you stun somebody by dumbfounding them that you just did that. Yeah, that is the best. <laughs> it's like the uh, it's like the Celts fighting naked or something, you know? Like it's <laughs> like it's just goofy. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously it must have feet. This video has been really fun. If you guys liked it, feel free to like give us you know advice or comments to do similar things or whatever. But again, this is not necessarily the top feats on D D Beyond. A lot of them are, but we also filtered through a little bit and picked some of the ones that we really like. Mm -hmm. uh, like this last one's really silly, but we had to include it. It's just so fun. <laughs> no, absolutely. And who knows? Maybe if uh, you guys like this video enough, we'll do the next five feats you should have at your table, or maybe we should start looking at spells. I'm sure there's a bunch of crazy homebrew ones down here too. Oh yeah, for sure.
and all the various different links in the description if you want an awesome shirt or if you want to check out the DC20 Alpha that's going to be in the description Kickstarter coming soon so get ready but until next oh, time yeah. everybody we'll see you all later see ya